Receiving and giving and receiving and giving in this service today. Let there be a continuous, constant 
flow of the Spirit of God. Let that river break right out of the throne and spill out all over this place today. Hallelujah. Let there be life-giving words of power and strength uh, that will enter into your people and stand them upright on their feet, quickened by the power of God and empowered by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Today, Lord, open in this house uh, a door of great utterance in the Spirit. Uh, give unction. Give inspiration. Uh, glory to God. Make our tongues the pens of ready writers today, God. Uh, let the oracle of God God be opened. Uh, let the word flow from the holiest place of all. Uh, from even that which is beyond the veil and within the veil. Lord, speak to us from your throne today. Heal those that need healing. Those that are uh, weak in their minds or bodies. Strengthen them even as they sit today under the preaching and the word and the worship of the Lord. Uh, let it be a time of great restoring and refreshing uh, and let every one of us uh, extend the depths of our knowledge of you and come into an even deeper relationship today. We thank you for it in Jesus name. Everybody said amen. amen. And amen. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. You don't believe your gloves here? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, what a perfect day to be alive. In the kingdom. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are the day, aren't we? We are that day. That's what we have to realize. It's not just the Lord's day, it's our day too. <laughs> We've been prepared for this day. Amen. So, the day of the Lord ain't just a uh, day on the calendar. Amen. The day of the Lord is a eternal day. Amen. It don't start and stop. It starts, but it don't ever stop. That's right. And uh, we have to get into that day. Yeah. We have to receive that day in us. You know, we got to be alive. We got to we're alive in that day. But we got it's it's not anything to do with time. Time on on the clock. It's not a twenty four hour day. Amen. It's a it's a great day. Yeah. It's our day. Hallelujah. And that day of the Lord is, is when you come alive. You're awakening. Yeah. That's when you walk into that day, isn't it? Amen. Yes, sir. You walk into it. You know, it's just... <clears throat> and, of course, we know what day is. It means light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. in the beginning, He divided yeah. the, night, the day from, uh, yeah. night from darkness. Yeah. He called the day, night, uh, day a light day. Yeah. And the darkness, He called it night. He called it night. Yeah. Right? So they... Can't, uh, you can't have both in your life. You know, that's in the natural. Mm -hmm. We know that the sun shines, and when he said on the fourth day, yeah. that's, when the, that's when he created the sun, yeah. natural light for the earth. Yeah. But in the very first thing, he said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. and that was his light. Yeah. It wasn't the sun then. It was the divine glory light yeah. in the beginning. And he separated, the, uh, separated everything. But even in the natural, the sun shines for, uh, all the time. It never has quit shining. That's true. It's just different parts of the earth. You know, the earth yeah. just kind of revolves around the sun. Yeah. So it's 20, there's the sun shining 24 hours. Yeah. And that never has quit. That's right. When you have to the fourth day, you know. So hey, we go worry about the God giving up or every, yeah. any shadow of changing and Him returning. That's right. Because the sun, <laughs> if, you could, if you could keep up with the sun, you could stay in daylight 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Get around the earth in that in that fast of a time, but then there's, that's his natural sun. But then there's a, <coughs> the sun he shines in our heart. Yeah. It's, like, it's a difference in our earth. But it is the day of the Lord, and it's like I said, it's one eternal day. It's a great day, yeah. and uh, he even come the day of the Lord even comes as a thief. And some people, because they because <coughs> they when the house of thief come, he comes in darkness. Right. He don't come in the day, you know. 
But uh, we know the morning begins in the evening. Yeah. yeah it begins, and that's the first day, you know. Yeah, Our morning begins in the evening. Amen. Yeah. So all of us first fruits are forerunners. We, we start receiving the light and darkness. Right. You know, before, before the day gets there. We, we receive it in the nighttime, you know, and then, then it comes day to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and even like in the natural, if you go, if you live up in the mountains or anywhere, when you see the sun coming up, it comes up over the mountains first. Oh, yeah. It comes through the top of the trees. Yeah. If you're living down in the valley, you ain't going to see light right, right away yeah. until it gets in the full day. By noontime, the valley lights up. Yes. You know, but first thing, the mountaintop lights up. Yeah. So that's why we, as saints of God, we're... As, uh, eagles, eagle saints. Yeah. Where that's why we stay high, you know, fly high. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the light comes on first. Amen. We're the first ones to get the light. Yeah. You know, so yeah, the rest of them will get the light. You know, the rest of creation will be lit up. Yeah. But it'll be in the in, a, in another hour. That's right. Not in the first hour. Yeah. The Bible talks about first fruits. There's always got to be first fruits. Yeah. You can't have a harvest without first fruits. You know. And we know who our first, our forerunner was, was Jesus. He was the first, yes. he was the first fruit, and he's the forerunner. Well, yes. And he's our pattern son. Pattern. Yes. And that's how God, he, he showed himself in Jesus, you know. See, God was in Christ, reconciled, reconciling the world unto himself. And uh, if we go, and we know that, uh, so we know that is a perfect day. There is a perfect day. But also there's, the numbers in the Bible has a value and has a meaning to them. You know, different numbers. Mm -hmm. We understand that. We just they have natural numbers, but in the spirit, you know, every num every number has a better day. Mm -hmm. As a third day, we know about that. Yeah. We know the seventh day. Yeah. We know that one and one is equals one in the kingdom. Yeah. You know, and uh, f five every number five means grace. You know, mm -hmm. ten means complete in the earth. Six is the number of man. Eight's the number of new things, yeah. things like that. So, but we got we got to think spiritually about those numbers. We just can't take and read them out of the Bible as a number and say, well, that's what's going to happen at that amount of time. Yeah. But that ain't right, you know. We can't do that. That's the natural way of looking at it. The carnal mind. Right. He, he just uh, that's where the church world is, you know. They're stuck in there. They got seven years of tribulation coming up, you know, and the millennium and all that. But actually, that's just years. That don't really that don't mean actually don't really mean that in the spirit. Yeah. That's just different times, you know. When God says the fullness of time, yeah. He doesn't mean a, a, a date on the calendar. He just means in His plan and His purpose, yeah. that's the fullness of time. Yeah. Right. And we can't go out and say, well, God's going to do this at a certain time, you know. And that's a man's doctrine. Yeah. <laughs> Men has their doctrine, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we ain't going to live off men's doctrine. No. That's right. Because Men's doctrine can, you know, it's temporary. Yeah. It changes. Sure. You know, when people write the books, you know, something's going to happen, it don't happen, <laughs> and they re have to redo it, yeah. have, to, have to update it, <laughs> revise, <laughs> revised version, you know, and say, yeah. well, well they, they update it because they got more light on the subject, so yeah. they think. Mm -hmm. But it's their light. There's more, there's more figuring in the way they figure out about it. Right. Yeah. But, so, when we think of the Bible, one, one number in the Bible is a thousand. And everybody thinks, you know, in, in Revelations in the 20th chapter, we can read uh, two or three word verses about that. And this is John speaking. He said, I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. We've always heard that preach, you know, in the, in, the, yeah. in the modern day, the old church, you know, about a thousand years. Yeah. Of that song, Jesus shall return to earth again, and Satan will be bound a thousand years. Yeah. Remember that old song? Yeah. <laughs> you know, not that he, you know, he's, he's going to return, but he's already, actually he never has left. He don't really have to return. Yeah. All he got is just reveal himself. Yeah. He's here. People just got to, uh, just got to get the understanding. And he never has left. He said, "Lo, I'm with you always." You see, so uh, he never has left. He's left the son of our thinking. We just, we just got to start remembering. That's yeah, all. That's right. And he's not. He never has left. And they cast him into a bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him, 
that he should not deceive the nations till a thousand years would be fulfilled, and he would be loosed for a season. Here they all talk about the thousand years. But if you think of thousand in, in God's terms, it don't mean years. It just means complete. Right. It's just 100%. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, over in the Psalms it says, God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Thousand hill. Well, that's every hill. Yeah. In other words, you should write that every hill. Yeah. You ain't going to go out of there and after a thousand hills, stop counting. You don't count a thousand <laughs> hills and say, well, now we wonder who the rest of this belongs to. <laughs> No, so you got you can't go by what the carnal man thinks. A thousand, a thousand just means complete. It means more perfection. It's just fullness. Yeah. That's all it means. It's fullness, you know. Yeah. So and he says he's the same to a thousand generations, right? Yeah. Well, there ain't been but 41, 42 generations we are in. So most likely there won't be a thousand generations, but it just means he's the same to every generation. Yeah. Yeah. So when we get over here in the Revelation, we start counting off the years, you know, a thousand years and this and that, and that ain't even what it's talking about. No way. It's just a, a thing of perfection. We're going to reign with Christ how long? Forever. Yes. We reign for forever. Oh, yeah. Why, if we yeah. start reigning with him, why would we stop? That's right. If we're going to stop, then we'll go, what else are we going to do? If yeah. God ain't going to, if God wrong can reign a thousand years, well, who's going to reign after a thousand years? True. Yeah. So when you hear all this, you're going to reign with Christ a thousand years, just forget about the years. Just That's take right. the years off. Yeah. Maybe King James put that in there. You know, what's the original, you know? We're just going to reign with him a thousand. My yeah. oh, Lord. I just make a thousand. You know, like a kid will say, well, you tell somebody you got thousands of dollars, they think you're rich, you know, and yeah. you got everything. But actually, you can count, you know, thousand dollars. But in their minds, you're rich and you got everything right. you're rich, you know? yeah. I ain't counting money. They yeah. just know the word thousand means right. you, you rich. Yeah. So we are rich in God, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where that, so you ain't going to worry about a thousand, Amen. a thousand years or nothing like that. Because yeah. it's just raining. We just reign forever and ever. Ever. And same way with Satan bound a thousand years. Once Satan is bound out of your life, Amen. He's bound, there's, there's no more Satan in there. Amen. Then, uh, <clears throat> There ain't no years to it. You oh, just yeah. you just totally put him down. Thank God. He's done left your life. Yes. And that's yes. it, you know. You don't ever refer to him again, you know. That's right. Mm -hmm. Once you become an overcomer, yeah. that's it. You don't you don't become an undercomer. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> once you once you've reached perfection, where else does it go? You're in perfection. Yeah. Yeah. You know? you can't back out of it, you know. Yeah. You know, it's perfect. You can't fix nothing that's perfect. That's right. Something that's right. perfect, you can't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way it is. <clears throat> but it's not in our own efforts or nothing like that. It's in Him. Yes. See, we're perfected in Him. Yes. We try to do it on our own, you know, we'll fail. That's right. You know, if we don't know, if we don't know the mind of the Spirit. Right. You couldn't have the mind of Christ do all that. So we're made perfect in Him. Yes. And that can't be changed. And Jesus is our, is our pattern, too. He's a pattern son. Yes. That's why God uh, was in Christ. He was in the face of Jesus Christ. If you want to see God, just look into Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus, well, Jesus, he said, told the disciples, you've seen me, you've seen the yeah, Father. Yeah, my father. Yeah. seen the Father, you see, so hey, don't be looking for nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, you know. Yeah. So oh, yeah. God, when, when God wants to be manifested in the flesh, God is what? God is spirit. Yeah. And, he knows, and he's the father of all spirits. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you refer to God as your father, just think of your spirit. He's the father of my spirit. Right. Yeah. You know, he just ain't a natural father up there. I mean, He's not your natural father, he's your spiritual father. Yeah. So that's how you refer to him, you know. You think of your spirit, you know. Every man has a spirit. You know, God's seed is in all man. Yeah. He's put his seed there, that's your spirit. That's your light. And uh, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. Yeah. And the Word became life. And the life is the light of men. Light of men. Yeah. See, so we look on Jesus there and we can be lit up. We have to be lit up. Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's right. Searching the earth parts. See? So your spirit is really hidden. Hidden from the natural mind. You gotta be a, have a spiritual awakening even to know you got one. Most people don't even know they have a spirit. And then if you got a spirit, you gotta start understanding you gotta know something about it. Yeah. You know, you gotta <clears throat> Paul refers to it as a treasure yeah. in an earthen vessel. Yes. That's where it's at, you know. And it's hidden. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The hidden man of the heart. Amen. That's what Peter calls it, the hidden man yeah. of the heart. You know? It's hidden. It's hidden in a dark place. 
<laughs> That's when when Adam fell. Actually, what fell was his spirit. Yeah. Right. His spirit. He was fell. You know. I know he had to leave the Garden of Eden and all that, but his spirit fell down within him. He just fell down into it like a bottomless pit. Yeah. So we're living on. People think there's a bottomless pit out there. Well, we're like the bottomless pit. Pit. You know, our soul has no. There's no bottom to it. It's a. Uh, it's always there, you know. But anyway, we have to realize that's uh, that, uh, that's the spirit. That's where we come alive at. Yeah. And we know that God is also light. He's the Father of light, sent me. And He lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That's how it goes, you know. So that's what God. That's what God is. Light. Uh, light is. There's a lot of things in this world that's invisible. You can't see it. That's right. But they still exist. Right. You know. You just can't see. It. You can't see the electricity going through these lines, but I guarantee you, you reach over and grab a bare wire, you yeah. feel it. <laughs> That's for sure. Can't see it, but you can feel it. You know. That's the way it is about the spirit of God. Sometimes you really can't see it, but it gets moving on this natural body. You're going to get to feeling something. You know, you're going to feel the baby leap. You're going to you're going to feel a nice clean feeling come over you. It's a, it's it's something you get out in the natural world, but it's something you can get in the spirit. You know, God has a quickening. When you quicken it, you know, you feel, you feel something inside you, you just leap a little bit. Right. You come, what it is is life, you come alive. There's life jumping in there, you know. So uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of things you can't see, like I said. And the one of the main things you can't see is light. You right. said, I can see light. Well, all you're, all you're looking at is a reflection of light. Right. That's all you're looking at. See, this electricity comes through these bulbs and uh, until the flip the switch, you ain't gonna see it, yeah, right. and then it reflects itself in. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's exactly how man's gonna save the whole, whole world. He's gonna flip the switch. Mm -hmm. When he gets ready to flip the switch in your life, yeah. then light's gonna show up. And what's right. gonna happen to the darkness? Well, disappear. Oh, God, disappear. Yeah. Disappear. Yeah. yeah. That's all. That's all light does. It just drives out the darkness. Yeah. So since God is the light of the world, all he gotta do is light up the world, mm -hmm. and light. And he has to light up in each individual world. Yeah. See? We got a. We're also worlds too. Yeah. We're small worlds, you know. We're miniature worlds. Yeah. <laughs> what's in What's in this outside world is in us too. Yeah. We're, we, we were created out of it, you know. We're yeah. made out of dust and dirt, wow. like that. So, so when the light comes on, everything changes, you know. What the first thing it hits is your understanding. Actually, you start remembering. Yes, yeah, will. we knew it all. We knew it all in the beginning. Yes. We were spirit, yeah. we were, and now we can start remembering. All of a sudden, you start thinking of something. Things will come to you, you know, spiritual thoughts. Right. Oh, all of a sudden, you realize who God is. You know, He's Creator, and everything is everything visible came out of the invisible. Oh, yeah. So you gonna look around. You look around at the skies and the moon, and the sun. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to look at is a reflection of light. If you look straight up in the sky and there's nothing there, you won't see nothing. Right. You see sky, you'll think you're seeing light, but you just ain't seeing nothing until an airplane or a bird or something comes right. flying through the sky, and then you'll see something. Yeah. But you really can't see light like it's invisible. Because right. everything invisible is eternal. That's yeah. the good thing about that. Just think about everything you can't see is eternal. Oh, everything God. I see is temporary. Temporary. Yeah. Temporary. Yeah. temporary. Yeah. temporary. Yeah. Just, it's passing, you know. It's here today and gone tomorrow, mm -hmm. like that. So that's why we have to uh, focus on the uh, in invisible stuff. Oh yeah. But we know that stuff's going to stay with us. I mean, that, that's not going to change. Yeah. See, so that's why God has to be visible, invisible. Mm -hmm. But in order for Him to be visible, in order for you to see light, He had to take on flesh. Yeah. He had to take on an object. You know, he had to take on a person. That's why we see in the face of Jesus Christ, you know. That's where we see God. Yeah. We're looking right at Him, you know. And He's our pattern Son. And he said the Spirit was given to Him without measure. Without measure. Without yeah. measure, you see. And He He had the perfect will of the Father. Right. right. Exactly. We just did what the Father said, you know. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> we're working on that. We got. But there's a thing called spiritual growth and development. Yeah. <laughs> that that's operating in our lives. Sure. You know. Just like uh, Jesus, the Bible says he learned what? Obedience. Obedience. Yeah. Through the sayings which he allowed. Right. Allowed his life. Mm -hmm. 
That's what God's looking for more is obedience than anything else. Yeah. He don't ain't really looking for you all your good works and everything. Wow. If your good works is and you ain't got no obedience and yeah. that ain't gonna work, you know. That's, right. that's what that's what happened in the beginning was disobedience. Yeah. That's what caused the fall, disobedience. Yeah. That's right. By that. Yeah. And a, a great patriarch in the old testament was Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham was he called Abraham up because he knew he, Abraham was full of obedience. Right. All Abraham did was obey God. Right. Yeah. He didn't have nothing to he didn't have no Bible to live by, he didn't have no rules to go by, nothing like that. Right. All he did was listen to the voice of God the and, and just did exactly what it said. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He didn't he didn't know no different. Yeah. He, right. he, he, nobody yeah. taught him any different. No nobody taught him that he shouldn't listen to God. Yeah. <laughs> All he knows when God spoke to him, you know, that light came on and that was it. In his life, you know, he didn't have the Holy Ghost and all that, not in the form that we know it. But uh, he, all he did was obey God. He was counted unto him for righteousness. Yes, it was. So that's what we have to do. We have to obey God. The Bible says, The willing and the obedient shall eat the good of the land. Of course, we understand land in the New Testament means spirit. Spirit. Spirit, right? So we eat the good of the spirit, don't we? We eat the fruits of the spirit. So when we come to the table, we're, we're not we're looking after uh, goodness, mercy, you know, mm -hmm. peace, all yeah. those joy, right. all those things. That, that's what's being served at this table, the spiritual table. Yeah. It's things like that. Hallelujah. Not carnal food. Yeah. We have to take care of the carnal food, but the Bible says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven," yeah. and all these other things will be added. Yeah. We always think about natural things, but what about all the spiritual things can be added? Yeah. You know, we focus too much on the flesh a lot of times, yeah. and what we have to do, we have to shake ourselves. You know, and say, "Hey, quit thinking about that." You know, it's about about looking over here and, and think on these things. You know, anything's yeah. a good report. You know, anything about thinking on spiritual things. Yeah. We got to be spiritually minded. You know, as much as we can. Yeah. yeah. I know we have to do. We have to occupy. You know, carry on as we do. You know, we have to take care of things all natural things but we don't have to be focused on them all the time right. we gotta spend a lot of time in his presence yes. yeah. for in his presence is fullness of joy yes. right and you get if you're unhappy well get in the presence of the lord you'll get happy right and fullness of presence of joy joy right <clears throat> so it all says the path of the just yes grows what brighter, brighter and brighter yes. up to the perfect day perfect. Up to that right. day you know so we're on the path, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's getting brighter and brighter. The path is, it's getting lighter and lighter. Yeah. It's getting plainer and plainer. Understanding, you know, that's where our spiritual growth comes. Yes, right. you've got the growth and development. See, he's not interested in our comfort. Too much right. comfort, and uh, you forget about your development and well. spiritual growth. Yeah. yeah, you'll get hung up in your comfort zone. Yeah. Right. You know, you see, and won't want to do nothing, won't want to put forth much of an effort, you know. Yeah. You think, well, God loves me whether I'm bad or good, you know. <laughs> I say something like that. Whether I'm his child, whether I'm obedient or disobedient. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're disobedient too long, you won't pay the price. Because <laughs> God, God does have judgment. Right. Now, in the Old Testament, it was rough back then. Good yeah. thing he didn't live then because you can get killed physically, you know. Yeah. All of yeah. them get killed back in the Old Testament, you know. Because that was the day it was under the law. Yeah. Right. So uh, that's what it was, you know. Mm -hmm. It was uh, survival of the fittest, something yeah. sort of like that, you know. <laughs> Everything was eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. Remember, yeah. ago, that's what that's for, you know. You did something, you killed somebody in my family, I killed somebody in your family. Right. Right. <laughs> kind of like the Hatfields and McCoys. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I mean, they, they, penalty, you know, was death for anything then. But now we ain't living in the Old Testament. We're living in the New Testament. We're living under grace. Yeah. You know? yes. God's still a judge. He judgment, but he ain't judging our. He ain't hurting us in the natural too much. He's after a spirit man. He's after a natural man changing it. He's, he's deaf to his death to Adam. What it is? There's only two men in the world, Adam and Christ. And uh, Christ is going to stay. He ain't going to live forever because he's going to change. Christ and you don't change either. That's right. So the death, who has to die? Adam has to die. Yes, the Adamic nature, you know, the carnal mind, that's all that. That all has to die. Mm -hmm. And that's in your soul, you know. you got to get your soul 
saved. Right. Your soul ain't saved, and you're following after the, the flesh part of you. Right. And you're just following after them, huh? And you become even. You become like a beast. You know? There's a lot, of, a lot of stuff out there. You know, unlawful stuff. You know, stuff that how you how you even think about people doing such thing. You know. But that's what the flesh man is. Mm -hmm. you know, he's part beast, you know. Yeah. And he has to be controlled. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I put my body under. Yeah. He has to keep his body under control. Mm -hmm. You know, he has to have control. But, so, <clears throat> so anyway, our spirit comes alive. Yeah. When God gets in us, you know. He like, he's, he's, he says he, he's the light as every man that cometh into the world. Yeah. Yeah. We come in this world with the light, and that light has to come on. Yeah. We have to be illuminated. It he has to show us. So that path of life, there is a path of life. Yeah. See? In Job it talks about there's a path that the, that the vulture eye is not seen. Yeah. I've seen that one. That's the path of death. That ain't the path of life. We know vultures live on death. Yeah. You know, they want to eat dead meat, yeah. dead food, you know, root kill and all that. Yeah. And what they feast on, you know. Yeah. But not, <coughs> not the eagles. They like live stuff, so that's the path of life. That's yeah. what the eagles yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. That's the path of life. Show us the path of life. So there is a path we have to walk. Yeah. And uh, Jesus is the path. You know, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So He's the path. We, just, we have to stay on the path. When we get off yeah. the path, that's where we get in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got to be going in the right direction, too. Mm -hmm. we got to be heading toward the perfect day. Yeah. So God is with us at all times. And we're discovering. So that perfect day, or the day of the Lord, it's a day of an unveiling. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. It's a day of the Lord inside of us. Yeah. We gotta have that day, you know. It's a it's a spiritual awakening and an unveiling. We take he's taking the cover off. Yeah. He's, he's taking the cover off those things in our uh, uh, our understanding. See, our understanding has been darkened. Yeah. The dark the, the God of this world has blinded the eyes. Right. Right. A lot of the God of this world is just uh, it's just tradition, just old teaching, things yeah. like that. But this is a new day. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a new day, so we've got to have a new revelation. Yeah. We've got to have some new teaching. Yeah. We've got to have some greater understanding, you know. Yeah. We've got to have greater revelation. We just can't live in the past. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Living in the past is a uh, old manna, wormy manna. That's yeah. right. But the Bible talks about revelations, about hidden manna. Yeah. Yeah. There's some hidden manna, isn't there? Yeah. There's some manna we don't know about. <laughs> Until we get re until it comes in the revelation, it's a manna that the prophets and the teachers in the past have prophesied about. Mm -hmm. It's all been talked about in in Isaiah, especially. You know, yeah. how about the nations are going to walk in the light of the Lord? You know, yeah. things like that. Well, how's that all going to happen? It's all going to have to be a, a, for, for the unveiling. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to see us. Oh yeah. yeah. Not only is Jesus the light of the world, but we also are the light yeah. of the world. Yeah. So they're going to look on us, you know, mm -hmm. and be enlightened. Yeah. They can see us, you know. We're the Savior's going up on Mount Zion to oh, yeah. judge the Mount of Esau. Mm -hmm. Right? Which is, God could do, it all, could do it all by himself, but he ain't. He included me. He yeah. included you. Oh, right? It's a great program, a great plan he's got. <laughs> and that's for the first fruits to help bring in the harvest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's why <clears throat> ain't nothing special about first fruits. We're just there first. We just chose to be first. We just want to be in the front forefront, you know. That's us, and we're special, and we've been chosen. Yeah. He's chosen us. He knows we've been dedicated. You know, mm -hmm. we have to. There, as the Bible says, uh, it's requ required a steward should be found faithful. Yeah. Faithfulness yeah. is required in here, yeah. and unto much is given, much is required. See, people don't want to hear much because they don't want to give out much. Yeah, that's that's how that is. I mean, there's probably a lot of Christians like that. You know. They say, ask, hear the old saying, ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't ask me not about the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> I, won't, I won't be able to give you, I won't give you my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there, so, that's the way it goes. But mm -hmm. that's not us. We're going to follow on. That's, yeah, that's not right. the first fruits. The first right. fruits follow yeah. along with us yeah. wherever we go. Right. They follow on to know the Lord. Yeah. Right. Another right. stopping right. place. Yeah. You can't know too much. Not about spiritual things. Yeah. No, you can't be too blessed, you know. Yeah. You can't do that. God God will bless you according to your soul prospering. Right. Right. If your soul ain't prospering, then you expect a whole lot of blessings, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, the blessings may come and they may disappear too. Sure. You know, come show up one day and next day they're gone. You know, why do they eat so fast, you know? Well, do a soul checkup. See where's your soul at? Has it been prospering, you know? Yeah. Have you been studying, been staying in the presence of the Lord, you know, and keeping your mind on spiritual things, you know? Yeah. Think on these things. Yeah. You know, if you ain't got the mind of Christ, then you're in trouble anyway. Because right. if you don't operate in His mind, then you're operating in your own mind. Yeah. There's only two minds. Yeah. <laughs> your mind and the mind of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> That's called a double-minded man. Yeah. And what do you know about him? He's unstable. 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 That's what it said about Reuben. He was unstable in water. Yeah. That's what it said Great. about him, you know. You know about water. <laughs> yeah. It could be ice cold or it could be hot or it could be choppy yeah. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but that way it is, you know. we got to be we got to be locked in. Yeah. we got to be focused on it, you know. Yeah. It's all a lifestyle, what it is. Mm -hmm. It's just not something some people like to go to church, you know. So I went to church Sunday. You know, I put my time in. Yeah. <laughs> It's time, you know, there you go with that time. Ain't no time in the spirit. <coughs> no, no time in eternity. Mm -hmm. Time is here for our sake. Yeah. God don't need no time. Right. No, he's already declared the end from the beginning. Yeah. If you already declared that, why would he need time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he declared the end from the beginning. Right. First and the last, you know. Mm -hmm. His plans and purpose have already been planned. Yeah. He's got plans and purpose. Yeah. And, they, and, they, and they come forth in the fullness of time. That's when Jesus came in the fullness of time. Yeah. Fullness of time is just when the stage is set just right. Mm -hmm. When everything's in order. Yeah. And then God will show up. Yeah. See? That's the way He shows up in our lives. We put everything in order. You oh, know? Yeah. That's all. It's a, it's a process anyway. It's a saving process. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been saved. We're being saved. Yeah. And we shall be saved. Yeah. See? Yeah. So it's, it's progressive. Salvation is progressive. Most people don't hardly know that. You know, they think you just once saved, always saved, or you are saved, but you got to follow on and know the Lord. Right. You know, <clears throat> it's required that we be found faithful, like I said, and we got to, the more we know about God, you know, the more we got to put into it. Yeah. It's requirement. He's, he's going to require more of you. Yeah. Like I said, you got to learn obedience. Right. That's what Jesus did, learn obedience. Yeah. So we got to learn obedience. Yeah. Amen. We got to obey. Trust and obey, and, uh, and then he can then he can work on our lives. Yeah. We got to best where we're the growth parts. We're growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus can't can't use babies. You know, he can't babies are on our little children. Mm -hmm. They only have so much uh, capability of doing anything. That's true. But you got to grow up and become a man. Yeah. And man and the Lord, you know, that's what yeah. it is. You grow up and you become good in Him. You you, know, you can you grow up in your understanding, yeah. and then you grow up in knowledge. You can't have knowledge without understanding. Yeah. You know, that's what Jesus said that you might that we might know Him in the power of His resurrection. Mm -hmm. And He also wants us to know, even as we are known. Yeah. He knows what we're, He knows what all about us, mm -hmm. but we don't know all about us. Yeah. We think sometimes we're failure and all this, mm -hmm. but we can't fail in Him, you know, because yeah. He's made strength in our weakness. He's made that's how He's strong, yeah. he's strong in our weakness. So we got to be we got to be caught up. It is caught up in him, <clears throat> like Paul. Yeah. The Bible says Paul. He got caught up in the in the second second chapter of Corinthians. He says he says I've been given the visions and revelations, but he says that such a one got caught up in the spirit. Yeah. He said whether in the body or other body, I couldn't tell. Yeah. It's just as real. It's just as real him being caught up in the spirit yeah. as it was living in the body. He couldn't tell the difference. Uh, yeah. You know. But he says. Uh, such a one I saw unlawful things that I couldn't even utter. It wasn't even, it wasn't even words. There weren't no words to tell the things I saw mm -hmm. in heaven, you know. Yeah. A lot of people talk about what they see in heaven. They talk about a lot of natural things. But there's nothing natural in heaven. It's all spiritual, you know. So you can't, you can't describe heaven with natural words. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no words to describe it, you know, other than what God gives us. Yeah. So, so we are in the day of the Lord. It's one eternal day, mm -hmm. one great day, and we ain't going to move out of it. Yeah. We've arrived there, and we're going to stay there. You give this is the day that the Lord has made, we're going to be happy and rejoice in it. The day He's given us. Yeah. You know, he's, given us he's given us His life, and, he, and He's given us His light. Yeah. And that's our life. Mm -hmm. So the light shines in the darkness, the Bible says, 
but the darkness can't receive it. Mm -hmm. But we've received it. Under those that receive, will he become the sons of God? So we are receiving from him. We've got to have a receiver on. God can give and give and give, but if we don't receive, and mm -hmm. we're not we don't gain nothing. Yeah. But God is for us. If God be for us, who could be against us? You see? Yeah. We can't uh, look around us and say things are against us if God is for us. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Neither give place to the devil, but we know there's no devil in the kingdom. The yeah. devil just means the evil. Yeah. What it means, and we don't give him no place in our life. Yeah. If we don't give him no place, then uh, we're going to be like Jesus. Jesus said, "The prince of the world has come, mm -hmm. but he's got nothing in me, because right. he's already won the victory, you know, yeah. over the devil." And that's why we become overcomers. Yeah. We overcome, mm -hmm. and that's what that sits upon the throne, the overcomers. He's the, that's the great ones, mm -hmm. the chosen ones. Yeah. We've been chosen in Him, you know, before the foundation of the world. Yeah. And and all we got to do is start remembering. Mm -hmm. We got to remember who we were, you know, and we're made in His likeness, created in His image. Mm -hmm. So what part of us was that? What part of us was created like that? Our spirit. Yeah. Our spirit was created in His image, made in His likeness. Yeah. But. That wasn't, we, when we were spirits, all we were was innocent, you know, we were just like children. But God wanted more than that, He wanted overcomers. Well, there's nothing to overcome in heaven. Where are you going to overcome? You're going to overcome on this earth. You're going to overcome what Jesus said. He says, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. So that's three things we overcome. Once we overcome them, then we can move on to greater things, you know. We, that's what God wants. We want somebody that's proven and tested. If we've been proven and tested, then God can use us. He ain't got to worry about us running out on Him. He can he, he give us eternal life, you know, and He knows He can depend upon us. So we're... That's why He's looking for overcomers. He just we're, ain't looking for somebody. He's already got angels that does everything He says. They don't know nothing about overcoming. All they do is just live in the presence of the Lord. But, when we become overcomers, we become like Him. We know good from evil, but we chose Him. We chose Him, haven't we? He wants us to choose Him. He said, choose you this day. You're going to take life or death. We're going to choose life, of course, the path of life. So, as an overcomer, we can uh, become, we can walk on Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the highest place in God. So we walk into Him, walk into His presence. In His presence, there's fullness of joy, and at His right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. Yeah. So and that's why we say, "Evermore, Lord, give us that bread." Yeah. He's the bread sent down from heaven. Yes, yeah. He is. Yeah. And he's, the Bible says, "Give us this day our daily bread." Mm -hmm. That means that's fresh bread every day. Every day. Right? Yeah. You like stale bread? No, oh, I like fresh bread. <laughs> it's natural, you know. Yeah. I see the date on the bread. You know, it's yesterday's day. You know, you might not want to use it. On a fresh loaf. <laughs> but that's what it means. Uh, we ain't going to eat old manna, old stuff, old bread. We're going to eat fresh bread because it's daily bread. He said, and that's what we need. The bread is nothing but the life of Christ. We eat his life. We, eat his, uh, we take his understanding into us. His knowledge becomes our knowledge. Like that. So I guess it is about 10 o'clock, so maybe we'll. 10 o'clock, maybe 11 o'clock. Well, 11 o'clock. <laughs> That's all right. Well, God bless you.